gas lamps are very much part of London's DNA. Um, they've been immortalised in on television, in film, in books, in literature. And London was one of the first cities in the world to have gas lamps in 1807 in Pall Mall. So they're very much part of what people who come to London look for. They're very much part of our history. They deserve to be saved. I was very surprised when I saw some guys who were working for the council digging a hole right outside my shop. And then they just breezily explained to me that they were just testing to see how easy it was going to be to convert the lamp to electricity. And I said, but it's a gas lamp. And they said, yes. And at this point, alarm bells started ringing. I think that the, the gas lamps, their, their very existence benefits my business. People don't come to London to see bland uniformity. Uh, you know, it might be more convenient, perhaps, administratively, if everything is, is standardised, but that makes life incredibly dull. Uh, and, and I think just as Cecil Court is the only street I can think of in this part of London where every single shop is an independent specialist dealer, being able to come and see something as bizarre as a working gas lamp is part of its charm. You see, Tim, they couldn't reflect if they were worried about the light. The thing that people need to understand is that gas is not a dead technology. Um, the emissions that come out of gas lamps are extremely small. Uh, we've calculated that a restaurant patio heater provides up to 10 times the amount of emissions compared to a Victorian gas lamp. So we're talking about very, very small quantities of gas here. Okay. Just do another visit required for that land that leads. Um, so if you look, this is where it's located. Owned, owned. And I'll issue that to yourself and you can get that done, whether you want a uh, regular basis. But it seems to be going out of time, so if we can get this clock replaced. Okay. We look after around a thousand lamps in, in and around London, and uh, half of them, approximately 500 of them, have mechanical clocks that need winding every two weeks that are very reliable, but they do need winding and do need that mechanism wound up every once in a while. So every 14 days or so, we'll wind up the 500 of them. Gin and tonic. <laughs> it's 
So we, we've got lots of spare parts. We've got a depot in uh, our depot in Battersea holds. We've got glass that is still manufactured today, whether that be curved glass or straight glass for the different types of lamps we use. But we, we get glass manufactured. We've got spare parts galore for these lamps that we've refurbished over the years. And we've also got manufacturers that we use that still make the parts today that can be altered to suit different types of lamps. Well, I think we've got a very good chance. Um, when we, we, we look at all the reasons why the lamps should be saved, and they very much stack up, I think, in favour of protecting the lamps, um, it's a question of working with the council now to explain to them why these lamps are so important and why they are an important part of our London's uh, historical culture and our industrial culture. Thank <laughs> you.